Welcome to Holistic Human Performance Podcast. My name is Jenna Bradshaw, where we talk all things holistic health, wellness, spirituality, fitness, meditation, energetics, and so much more to help you become the healthiest version of yourself. Let's dive in. This is not medical advice. This is simply to help you on your journey through health, fitness, and wellness. I hope this helps. You can complement this with anything that you are doing currently in your life. Enjoy. Throughout my own health adversities and on this healing journey, I've tried to find different communities and you know, people that understood where I was coming from. And I really wasn't able to find anything of the sorts. And I wanted to make it a priority of mine to create a community where we really focused on thriving, no matter what you're going through. Maybe it's autoimmune disease, maybe it's cancer, maybe you're someone who wants to tap into their intuition and start their own spiritual wellness business. Whatever it is, I find that the aspect of the metaphysical approach to health and healing is part of the puzzle. And that's why I have created and started the Thrivers Community Membership. I am so excited to bring this to you all today and really just enhance the community of other people who are like-minded and want to thrive together and make friends and network with other people who are on the same journey and with one goal. We want to be better, do better, and help the collective. And that is exactly what I want to bring to you all. And this monthly Thrivers Community Meetup will happen starting May 14th of 2024. And we will meet one time per month and really just brainstorm and come together, different guest speakers, all of the good things to help you thrive in your health and your life. And I hope to see you there. So you can find this at www.holistichumanperformance.co backslash coaching. I'll see you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Holistic Human Performance Podcast. I'm your host, Jenna Bradshaw, and today we have a special guest with us, Noemi Berez. She is an artist that blends the world of art and spirituality. Um, it's really, we're going to dive deep and I'm really excited to talk about this because I've, I mean, you know, I wouldn't consider myself an artist, I guess, but I've tapped into more so the realm of, aside from writing, like drawing and coloring and things of that nature, although I'm not great, like it's still like fun for me. So, um, you know, and I've seen, different people who talk about, you know, art psychology and how you can kind of like blend that together to help people with anxiety, overwhelm, finding their way as, you know, an artist or um, anywhere in that spiritual well- wellness realm. So I'm really excited to have her on and and talk about the healing power of art because it truly is a healing modality. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me today. It's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's get into it. Um, so talk about how you even got started in the world of like becoming an artist. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it started, you know, when I was when I was a kid or a teenager. I was always interested in in everything that it connected to art or crafts or jewelry making, painting, uh, drawing. So everything that that was creative. I was like a creative type of child. And then um, the big moment actually came in 20, 2012 and I was expecting my son and my only child. And it was, you know, I just sat down and it was I like I got a message from someone from the universe. They're like, you have to do something now and you have to make your first collage. And that was so fascinating because I sat down and I started to make my first very colorful collage that was kind of um, about a mix and match of everything I found, like old buttons and pictures and whatnot that I found at home. And since then, I didn't stop creating collages. And that was 12 years ago. So (laughs) um, 
Yeah, it was very, it's very, it was so interesting. It just came to me, and this is the, this is the um, way I wanted to express myself. And then I became more and more interested in the different part of collage making. I was doing paper collage, like cotton paste collages, digital collages. And actually I made some kind of, like, I'm not saying I invented it, but I started to use this new technique that I didn't really find it online or nobody else, you know, does it. And mm. it's, I'm making hand-sewn collages on canvas. So basically I'm sewing old pictures, old postcards, yarn, textile, old buttons, like all this brick and brick stuff uh, on these collages. And it's kind of a diary for me, for my family. And um, it's like I'm waving or sewing together the memory of my family. And oh, like... I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, and I also had a couple of group exhibitions in Cyprus because I live in Cyprus, Europe, and in Italy, in Hungary. And uh, so that was before COVID. And yeah, I it was just I just love doing it. And um, I just keep doing it because I, it's, you know, I don't make any money out of it. It's kind of a passion project for me mm. because uh, by, by time, by, you know, by day, <laughs> I, I run a podcast booking agency. But when I have time, I, I always there and I'm, I'm working on my collages. Which, by the way, that's how Noemi and I know each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Not, not because of the collage. <laughs> So then, you know, when she uh, emailed me about, you know, what she does and the healing power of art, I was like, oh, yeah, come on, let's talk about it. <laughs> um, so how did the piece, it is a passion project, which is yeah. when you find like passion and purpose in your life and you see the difference that it can make in other people's, you're like, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. Like it gives you this sense of motivation. So when did you start to blend um, you know, the aspect of psychology and spirituality into art. Yeah, it started when I started doing podcast guesting and that was like more about business and how to be a great guest on podcast. So that's what I usually do. I'm going on people's podcasts and talk about basically business. But then I realized that like there's so many people need help when they have anxiety when they are have depression and they're not feeling well. And because I went through a phase, I, I was grieving. Um, I lost my dad to cancer in 2019. Oh, and then, sorry. Thank you. And then my grandma in the same year to an accident. So, and COVID hit. So it, it was, it, it was, was a like, lot. Yeah, yes, back it to was back. a lot. It, yeah. it was a lot. Then I lost the business as well that we used to have before because of COVID. So it was a lot going on. And mm. I turned to art. I turned back to art. I completely switched off. I didn't watch the news or anything. And like every evening, I just started to work on my projects, on my art. And it really helped me to heal and really helped me to cope with grief. And then I noticed like, okay, if this is working for me, I should help other people. And uh, so I, you know, I just started to be curious and started to learn more about art therapy and positive psychology. I completed a couple of courses on this topic and I found it just really fascinating. And the, everyone can make art and maybe you don't call yourself artist but everyone can do that you can color as you said you can make a mandala a zendala you can you can scribble you can water you can do whatever you want but it will help you to heal and when I noticed that like okay let's spread the news I know podcast guesting is working and you know I can share my story I can share my knowledge so why not doing a podcast so that was my quest so and, and I'm still on it and I just want to help more people to get into some artsy stuff and get their you know bad feelings out there and help them with their anxiety depression panic attacks anything because art is such a safe space to express your emotions so yeah that's how it all started <laughs> That is so cool. And the fact that again like I talk about this all the time you notice like those breadcrumbs and you're like why not just like put this together and and you know be able to share this with other people because it helped me. Yeah. And unfortunately, you go through these very low moments in life and you know, it's all about how like the phoenix rising from the ashes like how are you going to get out of that? And you mentioned a really good point and I like that you did this. Um, where you said you were like, I'm not watching the news anymore. I'm not watching like TV. Um, and you went to 
art and you did like a different type of whatever healing modality that you sought out. And I talk about this a lot with my clients and students whenever we're first trying to like reevaluate their lives. And I'm like, okay, we need to de the first step detox your life. So on every aspect And one of them is, you know, are you watching a ton of TV? What are you consuming on social media? Like kind of like that digital detox. Mm -hmm. And then in turn, you replace it with something else, a positive outlet. And in your case, it happened to be art. So I really love that you just said that because it is absolutely a game changer. Absolutely. It was like kind of my sacred space and time. So every evening after work, I, I just went into the bedroom. I put on my headphone and I just listened to music or my audiobooks. And I, I was doing collages, like I was, you know, sewing them together. And that was such, it was like a meditation. It's yeah. like a meditative state. state. You were, I was in my zone. I just didn't want, it was, it was just so refreshing and freeing. Like every evening you do the same stuff instead of, you know, watching the news or scrolling on social media and checking out what other people do. So I was just focusing on myself. It was like a self-care routine too. So it was all about me and I didn't care with the world. And, you know, I didn't care if you know someone called me selfish or whatever. I, I really enjoyed that time. And I think it really helped me to get through some, you know, serious issues and stuff. Yeah. In life. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> let's talk about like, you know, what you learn from like a psychology standpoint, like how can it help people in terms of how can art help people in terms of relaxation and stress yeah. reducing, you know, and like getting into like that meditative state, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So as you mentioned, uh, art promotes relaxation. It It's such a amazing uh, tool to to have that and it's a stress reducing activity so creating art can really help individuals uh, feel more calm and centered when they do that and it's it's really a much needed break from the world from the daily life from the daily grind so it, I think it's really important mm. it's also important that art can really help you express emotions that you can't really express other way And yes, you can swipe everything under the carpet, but it won't stay there forever. So you really have to work through them. But if you start, art can be used to express emotions that are really difficult to put into words. Uh, It provides a really safe and non-judgmental space to express those emotions and explore those emotions. So I think that's really important. And also art can promote mindfulness. I mean, art can be a really a meditative practice because sometimes when you think about if you color something, if you paint something and you're not an artist, you just do it at home. You feel so calm. You feel so relaxed after. So it it can really help individuals just to be more aware of their thoughts and feelings and, and physical sensations. So it's it's just so beautiful. And also it's an increased awareness. It can really help individuals better to, to manage stress and anxiety. So it's, it's just beautiful. And also can improve your self-esteem. I mean, it really improved my self-esteem when I started to work these collages. And I really enjoyed the journey when I went through. I started a new piece. I didn't know what I was going to do, but it was just so exciting just to put these little pieces together and something nice came out of it. And sometimes I was a bit sad at the end and like, oh gosh, I have to, you know, it doesn't matter. I have to you know, start a new one, a new plan. And it really improved my self-esteem because when you when you see a finished piece, I mean, it's really help you to provide with kind of sense of accomplishment and pride because yes, I did this and I'm proud of myself. And maybe it's not perfect and maybe you don't want to exhibit there in a group exhibition or you don't want to start a solo ex- exhibition straight away, but you still feel really, you know, uh, happy about it and accomplished. And also, you don't have to do art alone. It can foster social connection. For me, it was, I because it was during COVID, so obviously I couldn't really go out and socialize and do right. art stuff together with other people. But art can really be a social activity. I mean, if you think about the old days when ladies got together and they were sewing these patchwork 
um, stuck together and, and they just work together on something beautiful, you, you can still do that. There are different groups and communities you can join and it can really help you to reduce the feeling of uh, isolation and which is still around even after COVID it's still around and I just saw uh, I think Ariana Huffington just shared a post on LinkedIn the other day is like about isolation and yes I think like 60% of the people are still tell, you know sharing that no they don't meet up with friends as much as they used to do and if you start something new if you crush it or if you need or something there's also clubs around so you can join those because community really helps to heal and you don't have to do everything alone. So yeah, these are the psychological point of views that it really help uh, with art and it just, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great point because I think a lot of people put like the expectation of like perfectionism yeah. on what you're like, you're not like a master artist, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe eventually you might become one, but you know, just like start, just do something. Um, what do you think is the best way for people to, who maybe, you know, are a little bit stuck in that perfectionist mentality of like, I'm going to do it wrong. There has to be a right way to do it. Like, what are some words of wisdom and some advice you would give those who like want to get started and be more creative, but don't know where to start? Yeah, I mean, just the best of it, I just don't think about that part. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. So don't overanalyze things. And yeah, just like, for example, if you start to make a collage, I think that's the easiest thing that you can do. And because sometimes people think I can draw, I can paint. I'm not good, not good with that. But making a collage, I mean, everyone got a pair of scissors, glue piece of paper, maybe some old magazines or books or whatnot. You can print stuff out from the internet and you can just print them out and cut it up and you just put together a collage. I mean, anybody can do that. Even I remember my son was, how old he was? Like three, four, whatever. He started to making these collages. And yeah, I mean, if a three, four year child can do that, you can do it too. So start with a collage, for example, because I, I always, you know, <laughs> I, I love making collages. So even if it's paper or digital or whatever, but like it's really easy to make, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, just, yeah, clip out, just cut up something, glue it together and like, wow, this is so cool. And just try it and just experience the journey. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And you don't even have to show it to anyone because this is for you. It's not for the general public. So yeah. just, just start doing something or start to crush it or knit. I mean, that's also very relaxing. I mean, and you can check some tutorials on you know YouTube and start doing it. And obviously you don't have to wear all this clothes and everything what you make, but yeah, you can start to knit a scarf or whatever. That's the easiest, so... Yeah. I remember when I was in middle school, I like crocheted. I made like scarves. I, yeah. And I recently ran into someone when I was doing a vendor event and she crocheted these like amazing, mm. like 3D, uh, like gnomes and <laughs> like all like different animals and stuff. And it was like the cool, I'm like, maybe I should get back into crocheting. It's it's like a great outlet for you to like be very present and just not think about whatever is going on in your yeah. life and just take a step back and be like, oh, OK, let me just like be creative. We forget to like tap into our playfulness. We become so rigid and structured. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people kind of like forget about art yeah. because, you know, and they for they don't even like almost remember how to tap into that childlike version of them where they're just like playing and like putting together collages or crocheting or knitting or you know even like a coloring book I literally have a coloring book yeah when I get like overwhelmed I'm like I need to step away from whatever I'm doing yeah. and I need to like go color right now and I do <laughs> it's it, and it's perfect you know what I mean what happened to my mom I mean she was a kindergarten teacher for like 40 years so she was into arts and crafts obviously because of the kids but then it was just a 
on a side note, so this story is, goes back to COVID again, and she came to Cyprus to visit us, but she stuck here for three months because there were no flights out from the country. So, oh my gosh. And, I, and I was born and raised in Hungary in Central Europe, so mm. yeah, like a two and a half hours flight from here, but still, you, she couldn't get home. So she got kind of anxious, and, and I saw that, like, oh my gosh, my mom is just, you know, she's not in a good place. So what I did, I found at home because that, you know, you couldn't go buy anything. So it's like, oh, mom, I have some like mandala coloring books here at home so i just gave it to her and with some you know uh color pencils and everything and she started to make these mandalas like just coloring them and i don't know how much she went through through the covid time here with us i mean she needed it for sure <laughs> uh, but she they thought they were so beautiful and then she was so proud and i saw that it really helped her to to relax and not to worry so much about the world and you know what's going on in the world and uh so it really helps people to relax and she did it like religiously every day like in the afternoon it's like okay i'm doing my coloring today it's like cool and <laughs> it that's so awesome really, it was so nice and uh also, I also read about it, uh, about the, you know, uh, the art therapy uh, during my art therapy course that, for example, even like uh, adults can finger paint because some people say, oh, my gosh, that's only for kids. But no, you can do it, too. I um, mean, you just, you know, you just paint and your, you know, your fingers, your hands and off you go. And it's just fun because, as you said, we forget about how fun it was to be a child and how fun it was to to color with crayons or with pencils or anything we were so creative but i think unfortunately the school system and even sometimes families they really like kill these <laughs> creative vibes yeah. out of the kids and we don't really support it because you have to study you have to study you have to you know earn a living you have to do this you have to do yeah. that and in the meantime we just lose this interest in all this creative activity while it really helps to think and to come up with great ideas while you're doing them. So we should really implement these things in our life more and more, even as an adult. It, and it's never late to do that. Yeah, I completely agree with that because then you're showing like, let's just say if you do have children, you know, you're leading by example and you're kind of like, and it's a fun bonding moment mm. with you and your kids. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it's almost like, you know, you said your mom was a kindergarten te teacher. So like, it's kind of cool how she did that and kind of instilled that within you. And now you're seeing that as such a positive mindset and the, the healing benefits of art. And now you're teaching other people that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And sometimes you can just incorporate that in like, I love walking. I'm a walker. I walk every day. And, yeah. um, and we have like beaches, beautiful beaches nearby because it's Mediterranean seas here. And sometimes we went to the beach and I, my son helped me to collect stones. And uh, so we brought them home, we cleaned them. And then I made collages on stones. So it's like paper collages on stones, which is another like a very rare medium to use, but it's really fun. And, you know, it's interesting to use those stones and you can even, you know, help your child to do that. But it can be a family activity. So it, you don't have to do it alone. And um, yeah, so it, it can be fun. And just don't forget about the fun part, because that's all about fun and just help you to relax and just lose yourself in it. Yeah. So actually, a quick story. I was this just reminds me, I was teaching a workshop with a big group of moms. Um, and, you know, all of them wanted to improve their lives in some way, shape or form, mm. whether it be f through fitness or, you know, creating a, a business with like a passion project or something like that. And I, there were probably about half of the women who were so stuck in this, like doing it wrong and doing it right, that it hindered them from mm. actually creating anything. And I'm like, no, relax. Like, what do you want? Like, just start putting things on there. Like, you know, a vision board is intentional, of course, but it's still a form of creativity. Yeah. And, you know, just like, what do you, and and honestly, half of those women, when I ask them, well, what do you want? Like, what do you want to accomplish in life? Or like, what do you want for your life? What do you desire? Half of them couldn't even answer that question. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a great way to kind of like tap into that. Yeah. In, a, in a form of creativity so that you can 
really start to learn what it is you want, how to reinvent yourself, because you're always going to be changing. You're always going to be, you know, there's different forms of art that you will start to do in your life and incorporate and integrate into your life. And then, you know, you may not do it again for a while and then you pick up something else. You know, there's, I think, I mean, there's really endless things yeah. that you could consider art. <laughs> Absolutely. And what I, 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 and I'm, I love gratitude and everything about like gratefulness and, and I think that's just so important in our life. So what you can do, just a couple of tips, like for yeah. example, you can have a gratitude jar and you can have these piece of papers and just put some things in it. What are you grateful for in life? You just you like add like three or five more things every day into the jar. And sometimes when you feel really down or blue or, you know, something's happening in your life, you take out a couple of pieces and you, you just check these little notes like what I'm grateful for. Or I love also, that. I, did, I, I love it. I think it's such a great idea. And also this like a branch that you can take from outside, maybe there's a tree or whatever, like. And you hang these great gratitude little notes on the tree. So what are you grateful for? And grateful for my family, my health, my body, my whatever, hair, my life <laughs> or anything. And you can just hang those little notes on the tree. And it always reminds you when you when you when you're not feeling hundred percent that like yeah I should be grateful for all those things and this is not really art but it's part of like art therapy and it really can help you focus on things or there's another medium like again going back to collage <laughs> uh, because it's just so easy to make um, yeah you pick you pick your you pick your five strengths in life and if you there are certain like um, surveys, free surveys that you can um, fill out or submit. And it's called it's VIA, uh, that's the name, yeah, viacharacter.org website. And you, you find out what are your five strengths in life. And then you, found, you find pictures about this strength and that symbolizes those strengths. And then you cut them out, use the glue, scissors, everything, and you just put them on a paper. So voila, that's a collage. And you can hang them somewhere that you can see it every day. And when you don't have energy to do stuff or you, you're really not feeling up to par those days, you just look at those, you know, just look at that collage and just remind you what are my strengths, what I'm good at. And these are all like little things and small steps that can really help you make a difference in your life. And again, you don't have to be an artist to do that. I absolutely love those ideas. I am 100% <laughs> incorporating those into my life. That is so fun. The gratitude jar, absolutely love that. And then bringing in, a, you know, a branch like or something from nature. Like yeah. that is awesome. What a great idea. Wow. I hope the listeners uh, utilize this. So great. Um, so as we wrap up, what are some words of wisdom you have for the listeners? For me, it's just to find your inner peace and to find relaxation and to get rid of anxiety and, and coping with grief, you really have to start something and just start doing it and change your habits and start doing something artsy. And you don't have to be an artist doing that, but you have to be persistent and consistent and you have to do it every day and stick to it. Because as I read it, like if you do something for 60 days, it will become your habit. And then you can get away from it. It's, it was the same with walking for me. And I started to walk and now I just can get in on it. And like collage making is the same. I started 12 years ago and I'm still doing it. So just keep on doing things. And just that's my mantra in life to just keep going, just keep doing things. And it will definitely help you. Mm, I love that. Thank you so, so much. It was such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much, Jenna. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. You. So um where can where can people find you uh they can find me on linkedin uh, that's kind of my professional space so it's it, you can you type my name in noemi barras but if you use my name it's noemibarras.com that's my arts website and you can also find, find me on instagram i'm pretty like active there again my name noemi barras if you just you can follow me there and i share tips about art about mindfulness about gratitude and i'm a co i'm a, like a content creator on my instagram account on my instagram page so yeah please follow me perfect and guys i'll add all of that in the show notes so you can find no amy and just thank you so much what a great podcast um interview and 
just really giving you guys another option of how you can incorporate different healing tools and modalities into your life. You don't have to be structured and rigid. rigid. Uh, this is a great way to do it through art. And I hope you enjoy. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.